Deciding then that, in fact, he could not move, he thought himself of having recourse to his usual remedy, which was to think of some passage in his books, and his craze brought him, brought to his mind that about Baldwin and the Marquis of Mantua, when Carlotto left him wounded on the mountainside, a story known by heart by the children, not forgotten by the young men, and lauded and even believed by the old folk, and for all that not a whit truer than the miracles of Mahomet. This seemed to him to fit exactly the case in which he found himself. So making a show of severe suffering, he began to roll on the ground, and with feeble breath repeated the very words which the wounded knight of the wood is said to have uttered. Where art thou, lady mine, that thou, my sorrow, dost not rue? Thou canst not know it, lady mine, or else thou art untrue. And so he went on with the ballad as far as the lines, O noble Marquis of Montois, my uncle and liege lord, as chance would have it, when he had gotten to this line, there happened to come by a peasant from his own village, a neighbor of his, who had been with a load of wheat to the mill. And he, seeing the man stretched there, came up to him and asked him who he was and what was the matter with him that he complained so dolefully. Don Quixote was firmly persuaded that this was the Marquis of Mantua, his uncle, so the only answer he made was to go on with his ballad, in which he told the tale of his misfortune and of the loves the emperor's son and his wife all exactly as the ballad sings it. The peasant stood amazed at hearing such nonsense, and relieving him of the visor, already battered to pieces by blows, he wiped his face, which was covered with dust. As soon as he had done so, he recognized him and said, Senor Quixada, for so he appears to have been called when he was in the senses and had not yet changed from a quiet country gentleman into a knight errant. Who has brought your worship to this pass? But all questions, the other only went on with his ballad. Seeing this, the good man removed as well as he could his breastplate and back piece to see if he had any wound. But he could, but he could uh, blood see no blood to see if he had any wound. But he could see no blood or mark whatever. He had then contrived to raise him from the ground with. No little difficulty hoisted him upon his ass, which seemed to him to be the easiest mount for him, and collecting the arms, even to the splinters of a lance, he tied them to Rociante, and leading him by the bridle and the ass by the halter, he took the road for the village, very sad to hear what absurd stuff Don Quixote was talking. Nor was Don Quixote less so, for what with his blows and bruises he could not sit upright on the ass, and from time to time he sent up sighs to heaven, so that once more he drove the peasant to ask what ailed him. And it could have been only the devil himself that put into his head tales to match his own adventures, for now, forgetting Baldwin, he bethought himself of the more abindarazes, when the alicate of Antiquera Rodrigo de Navarres took him prisoner and carried him away to his castle, so that when the peasant again asked him how he was and what ailed him, he gave him for rapidly the same words and phrases that the captive Albinadares gave to Rodrigo de Navarres, just as he had read the story in Diana de Jorge de Montemayor, where it is written applying it to his own case so aptly that the peasant went on along cursing his fate that he had to listen to such a lot of nonsense from which, however, he came to the conclusion that his neighbor was mad. And so he made all haste to reach the village to escape the wearisomeness of this harangue on of Don Quixote's, who at the end of it said, Senor Don Rodrigo de Navarres, your worship must know that this fair exfara I mentioned is now the lovely Dulciana del Toboso, for whom I have done, am doing, and will do the most famous deeds in, of chivalry in the world has ever seen, are to be seen, or ever shall be seen. To this the peasant answered, Senor, sinner that I am, Cannot your worship see that I am not, not Don Rodrigo de Navarres nor the Marquis de, de Mantua, but Pedro Alonso, your neighbor, and that your worship is neither Baldwin nor Abindares, but the worthy gentleman, Senor Quixada? I know who I am, replied Don Quixote, and I know that I may not be those I have named, but all the twelve peers of France, and even all the nine worthies, since my achievements surpass all that they have done altogether, and each of them on his own account. 
With this talk and more of the same, they had reached the vill village just as night was beginning to fall. But the peasant waited until a little later that the belabored gentleman might not be seen riding in in such a miserable trim. When it was seeming to him the proper time, he entered the village and went to Don Quixote's house, which he found all in confusion. And there were the curate and the village barber, who were great friends of Don Quixote. And his housekeeper was saying to them in a loud voice, What does your worship think can have befallen my master, Senor Luciante Pero Perez? For so the curate was called. It is three days now since anything has been seen of him, or the hack, or the buckler, lance, or armor. Miserable me. I am certain of it, and it is true that I was born to die, that these accursed books of chivalry he has, and has got into the way of reading so constantly, have upset his reason. For now, I remember having often heard him saying to himself that he would turn knight errant and go all over the world in quests of adventures. To the devil and barbers with such books that have brought to ruin in this way the finest understanding there was in all La Mancha. Then he said the same and more. You must know, Master Nicholas, for that was the name of the barber. It was often my uncle's way to go to stay two days and nights together poring over these unholy books of misadventures, after which he would fling the book away and snatch up his sword and fall into slashing the walls. And when he was tired of it, he would say he had killed four giants like four towers and sweat that flowed from him when he was weary, he said, was the blood of the wounds he had received in battle, and he would drink a great jug of cold water and become calm and quiet, saying that this water was the most precious potion which the sage, as quiff a great magician and friend of his, had brought him. But I take all the blame upon myself for never having told your worships of my uncle's vagaries, that I might put a stop to them before things had come to pass and burn all these accursed books, for he has a great number that richly deserve to be burned, like heretics." So I say too, said the curate, and by my faith, tomorrow shall not pass without public judgment upon them, and may they be condemned to the flames, lest they lead those that read them to behave as my good friend seems to have behaved. All this the peasant heard, and from it he understood at last what was the matter with this, his neighbor. So he began calling aloud, Open your worships to Signor Baldwin and to Signor the Marquis of Mantua, who comes badly wounded, and to Signor Albedares the Moor whom the valiant Rodrigo de Navarres, the Alcalade of Antiquiva, brings captive. At these words, they all hurried out, and when they recognized their friend, master and uncle, who had not yet dismounted from the ass because he could not, they ran to embrace him. Hold, said he, for I am badly wounded through my horse's fault. Carry me to bed, and if possible, send for the wise Urganda to cure and see to my wounds. See here, plague on it, cried the housekeeper at this, did not my heart tell the truth as to which foot my master went lame of? To bed with your worship at once, and we will contrive to cure your here without fetching that her guarda. A curse, I say, once more, and a hundred times more, on those books of chivalry that have brought your worship to such a pass. They carried him to bed at once, and after searching for, for his wounds, could find none. But he said they were all bruises from having had severe fall with his horse, Rocinante, when in combat with ten giants, the biggest and boldest to be found on the earth. So, so, said the curate. Are these giants in the dance? By the sign of the cross, I will burn them tomorrow before the day is over. They put a host of questions to Don Quixote, but his only answer to all was, give him something to eat and leave him to sleep, for that was what he needed most. They did so, and the curate questioned the peasant at great length as to how he had found Don Quixote. He told him in the nonsense he had talked when he found on the way home, all which made the Lysiente the more eager to do what he did the next day, which was to summon his friend, the barber, Master Nicholas, and go with him to Don Quixote's house. <laughs>